Today's topic is, is Ben in the face veil or burqa the way to go for Australia? Belgium is uh, the first European country to ban the face covering veil, which some would refer to as burqa or niqab or simply face veil. France is moving in that direction too. A draft law in France to be introduced to the Parliament in July this year, which is 2010, is expected to include a fine of 150 euros for wearing the face veil or burqa in public and 1500 euros for forcing anyone to wear the face veil. Some other European countries are likely to follow this as well. A few voices in Australia have in the past argued for banning the face veil or burqa. There are two types of veil that some observant Muslim women commonly wear in public. A full body covering that includes the face, which is called burqa or niqab or face veil. And a partial one that covers the entire body, except for the face and hands, which is usually referred to as hijab. Very few Muslim women wear the face veil or burqa, while a good number of observant Muslim women wear the hijab. In any case, most Muslim women in the West and elsewhere do not wear either the face veil or hijab, and instead choose to wear other forms of modest dress. Arguments for banning the face, veil or burqa are often based on a particular understanding of the full veil in the West. In the West, often the face, veil or burqa is seen as a relic of the Middle Ages, a sign of women's oppression by Muslim men, and one that keeps women completely cut off from the rest of the society. It is also seen as a major barrier to women's participation in social, political and economic life. And one of the most obvious signs of the taking over of public space by the so-called extremists. Banning the face veil or burqa is perceived to be a way of upholding women's human rights, freeing them from oppression and helping them to integrate into Western society. Of course, these arguments are not just confined to non-Muslims in the West. There are plenty of Muslims who agree and see the face, veil or burqa in exactly these terms. The reality is that for the vast majority of Muslims in the West and elsewhere, the face, veil or burqa is not considered an Islamic obligation. Even very observant, practicing Muslim women would argue that a woman's face need not be covered. While it is hard to find any accurate data on Muslim views on the face, veil or burqa, in practice the number of women who wear this covering is very small. In a country like Australia, only a couple of hundred women would wear the face veil at the most. Likewise in several European countries. It is reported that in France roughly 1900 Muslim women wear the face veil or burqa. Uh, out of the 57 or so Muslim majority countries, <coughs> the face veil would only have a significant presence in a handful. For many Muslims it is simply a cultural practice from the past justified by some Muslims today using a rather restrictive reading of a few Islamic texts. For most mainstream Muslims, there is no explicit obligation in the Quran for Muslim women to wear the face, veil or burqa. The vast majority of Muslim scholars, past and present, argue that a woman may leave her face and hands uncovered in public because this is necessary for women to undertake work or to participate in social activities. 
Some scholars even see the face veil or burqa as simply a religious innovation or bid'ah or an introduced practice after the Prophet Muhammad's death, something that should be rejected. Even during the most important and sacred religious event of the year, which is the annual pilgrimage to Mecca or Hajj, Muslim women are specifically commanded not to wear the face veil or not to cover their face. In the daily prayers, one of the five central pillars of Islam, most Muslim scholars argue that a woman is not required to cover her face. Most observant Muslim women either wear the hijab or simply opt for another form of modest dress that does not involve even covering the hair. It is true, however, that during the late 20th century, an ultra-conservative expression of Islam has been making its mark on the world. And part of this movement is a heavy emphasis on veiling. The taking up of the face veil has increased among some women, largely because of this influence. Even in societies that have historically had no attachment to either form of the veil, Given that most Muslims do not see that face covering veil or burqa is an Islamic requirement and do not practice it, perhaps one could argue that it should be banned. While it may be necessary to discourage such forms of veiling in public, my sense is a ban on the public wearing of the face veil is likely to be counterproductive. If the motivation for this restriction is to free Muslim women from segregation, seclusion or patriarchal control, a ban is likely to have the very opposite effect. Any ban could easily be taken by some Muslims as a war on their religion and they will use the face veil as an Islamic symbol to be defended. In this context, less conservative Muslims are also likely to be attra uh, attracted to the face veil or the burqa as a symbol of protest, which will only serve to increase its popularity. This appears to be exactly what happened in France when the hijab was banned in public schools. Its uptake among young Muslim women in particular went up, apparently. Quite apart from the rhetoric about the face veil or burqa and women's oppression, there are some Muslim women, though very few, who sincerely believe that wearing a face veil or burqa is their religious duty, and they wear it based on their own personal conviction. For those who hold this view, as a society that respects freedom of religion, Australia should allow people to wear what they want in the name of their religion as long as it does not affect public safety and morality. As a society, we allow both men and women to wear very little in public. Perhaps we should allow people to wear more if they want. If there are public safety or security issues related to wearing the face veil or burqa in certain environments, then the state can and should take this into account. But this has nothing to do with religion. This is much like the restrictions we already have that govern the clothes appropriate for particular environments, such as the compulsory wearing of helmets in construction zones. Equally, there are workplaces where showing a person's face is crucial for carrying out that role competently. In professions such as teaching, nursing, medicine, <coughs> engineering and the like, there is an expectation that employees should show who they are. The state representing the community may oblige those who are in these professions to show their face. Similarly, at airports and when entering other sensitive places like certain premises or banks, for example, people are required to show their identity. And this is most visible in their face. Those who wear the face veil perhaps should have the right to wear it in public and private, but they probably do not have the right to insist 
that they should be allowed to wear it in all workplaces or environments. If those who wear the face veil or burqa argue that it is their right to work in these professions and wear the face veil or burqa at the same time, then the community has the right to say no to them. Even Islamic legal norms dictate that the community has the right to declare certain things unacceptable or acceptable as part of public interest.